participation. Uh, <coughs> the Antichrist's uh, attempt to stop the King of the East is, is what, what is the conflict here at Armageddon, and I can show this quite clearly on the map. There's a reason why uh, the news comes from the north and from the east in this case. The valley is here. Uh, the major armies are going to come from this direction, primarily from the uh, north and east, and the Antichrist forces land uh, here at Haifa to meet them. I don't think the force from the south is much of a consideration. I think that uh, ha holding Megiddo, the uh, Antichrist can see them coming, and he has the mountains to protect the valley. But his main worry is this huge 200 million man force. And it's easy to see uh, why they come from two directions, the north and the east, if we look at the mountains and the sea. If this is the direction that the 200 million men are coming, some will have to come in the valley this way from the north because of the Sea of Galilee, some this way from the east because they simply can't, can't go across the water. The king could walk on this water, but not the devil. And so the troops come around the sea from these two directions. The Antichrist forces in from uh, the Ten Nation Confederacy, Western Europe, come in ships to Haifa. I think the attack from the south may be helped by aircraft from Libya coming this way. Uh, whether there is a real southern attack from Ethiopia is unclear, but the battle really is unfinished. If it were to go on and we watched the, the entire uh, uh, explosion right in here, why we would see who wins or loses, but we don't see that because the Lord said if I had not come then, there would be no flesh saved. It's uh, surprisingly clear what goes on, and it always has. That is, the ancient armies came from the east and the west, and fought at uh, the Valley of Armageddon. King Josiah was killed here. Napoleon once stood here. Uh, with regard to the scripture about Armageddon, which he well knew and said it uh, would be an excellent place for a pitched battle of that size, and uh, he knew something about battles. Uh, also, the Jewish sages, the commentators of ancient days, spoke on the subject of Armageddon. They didn't call it by that name. They hadn't seen the book of Revelation, or of course, any of the New Testament. Uh, the Kabbalist Avraham ben Eliezer Halevi uh, felt that all the psalms, the lyrics, are battle songs of the final apocalyptic war and that every devout Jew should consider them as such. That is, when, when you read a psalm of the glory of the Lord, of the Lord of hosts, of the victory of the Lord, it's in reference to Armageddon. And the coming of Messiah was supposed to shake the foundations of the world. In the view of the prophets and Agudists, uh, commentators, a redemption would only follow upon a universal revolutionary disturbance, unparalleled disasters in which history would be dislodged or destroyed. From the essays in Messianic Idea in Judaism. In other words, this has been no secret. Everyone has known it. You don't have to be a believer or even religious to appreciate that this crossroads here in the Middle East is the center of the earth and a real hot spot and uh, in the future is to be really fought over to the point where God himself has to come and stop the battle. Now we've come over to the coast of the Mediterranean from Megiddo to the city of Haifa. And I wanted to show you the large natural harbor that is here, a deep water port that can accommodate very large ships. Uh, indeed, the uh, U.S. carriers often uh, dock here, the military ships and passenger vessels, big tankers and so on. And a lot of ships are going to be needed to move down from Western Europe, the Antichrist Ten Nation Confederacy. Uh, that is detailed uh, in uh, Daniel 7. Let me show you on the map what we've done. We were at Megiddo, at the southern part of the Valley of Armageddon, and we saw the forces arriving from either side, the King of the East splitting uh, around the Sea of Galilee and coming in from the east. And then we drove along the Carmel Range to Mount Carmel at Haifa, climbed about halfway up the mountain, and we're looking down at this natural hook in the coast that makes this port. And uh, we'll have the Ten Nations coming in docking here and entering the Valley of Armageddon from the west. So this is the, the main antagonist of the battle, are the King of the East and the Antichrist armies of Western Europe. Uh, King of the North and South, of course, will join the fray as well. But this is the way that they come in from Western Europe. And to make reference in Daniel 7 to that, uh, he says in verse 23, 
the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. Uh, the fourth kingdom in Daniel's parlance would be Rome. He saw the kingdoms uh, that ruled the earth and that oppressed Israel as Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome, and that's how it's been. Rome is the last one. It is a revived Roman Empire, a confederacy of Western European states that is the uh, allies of the Antichrist. By the way, we're here on a public road. There's traffic and noise and so on, uh, but it's a good observation point of the harbor. This is how life will be in the time when uh, Armageddon comes. People will be as they were in the days of Noah, going about their business, marrying and giving in marriage and so on when the rain starts and the battle comes and the world ends. In any case, uh, the scripture goes on that the, this new Roman Empire shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it into pieces and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. And so the Antichrist will have the power of, you know, what we might know now as NATO, an alliance of Western European nations. I don't know if, if what's left of our country will be involved in this uh, uh, coming at the end of the tribulation as it does, but uh, that will be the force to oppose what we've thought of through the ages as the great yellow peril, the, the enormous army coming from the Far East. That, those are the main antagonists at Armageddon. And I didn't want to leave the impression that there are no casualties at Armageddon. The Lord comes uh, so that uh, all flesh wouldn't be eliminated from the earth, but uh, the Revelation tells us the blood will rise to the height of the horse's bridles. And in Zechariah 14, verse 12, it says, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth.